Hello and welcome to the second Polygon homework. Now even though I'm using Blender here, everyone can follow along in their program of choice. So you can work in 3ds Max, Maya, Modo, Cinema 4D, even ZBrush has some Polygon modeling capabilities. So please do not feel discouraged if you're not using Blender. You can follow along with any program that has Polygon modeling capabilities. So in the second video of Polygon homework, we're mostly going to focus on extruding and insetting. And real quick guys, if you want to learn this awesome new program called Plasticity, I've got a course for you in the description. It's the first link there. And it's got a lot of awesome content. It's got over 42 hours of educational content. It's got a tree cutting mix. It's got a police robots, uh, Omega, uh, SMGs, Cyborg Ninjas, and much more. So be sure to check that out. So what you can do for this Polygon homework is that you can subdivide your mesh. If you're using another program and you don't have subdivide, you can use, for example, the subdivision, whatever your program has for subdivision, you can just go ahead and use that. And here, if you're going to use this method, you can use simple, for example. And then we're going to use control A to actually apply this. You can see the hotkey for that is control A. So simply over here and control A. And there we go. Now I have much more polygons to work with. So pretty much what you want to do is just to subdivide and let's say, get to something like this level right here. All right, so what you can do for this polygon homework is you can, of course, select various polygons and edges and vertices. You can, of course, move, rotate, and scale them. And so aside from that, what you can do is extrude and inset. So those will be your main modeling functions here. So forget about everything else. Do as much as you can using simply extrude and inset. Just really kind of get familiar with this tool. If you have not used it enough, if you've been relying on just boolean everything, try to do as much as possible with just extrude inset. Now, what I recommend actually is to change the default hotkeys for this because by default you use I for inset. And so what I recommend is I use shift space for extrude and then control space for inset. I find those to be a very intuitive hotkey because my thumb likes to stay on the space bar. So that's very important. And then my pinky likes to stay near shift and control. So for me, being able to just quickly extrude and inset is just very easy here with these hotkeys. So sometimes the default hotkeys aren't always the best. So pretty much you may look at this and thinking, well, this looks very basic. How am I supposed to do anything with this? Well. You gotta get creative and you gotta really explore what you can do with just these basic tools. See, if all you do is rely on booleans and boxes, you don't have to actually force yourself to get creative with your tools. You just kind of make the same designs. So we can also just add to the vision surface here. What I like to do is just to add one layer with simple and then the second one with the Catmo Clark. And that way you have this nice combination. We can also right click and shade smooth. All right, so in order to actually use this, let me just turn off the floor and also the Y axis and the 3D cursor. All right. So in order to actually use this, we can of course turn on mirror as well. So let's say this situation, I wanna work from left to right. So we're gonna turn on mirror, X bisect, and we're gonna to have to flip it. There we go. So in order for you to use this effectively, what you wanna do is just kind of work with the extruded inset. Remember, you can use move, rotate, and scale as well. So for example, let me just subdivide once more. There we go. What you can do here is let's say select this, and then you can extrude and then you can right click right away. That will extrude, but keep it in the same exact value. So it's almost like extruding with the value of zero, and then you can rotate. Turn on your subdivision again, and now you notice how we get this interesting result here. Now, this looks very awkward, so you'll have to just kind of undo and just kind of try something else. Not every result will be a winner. So in this situation, let me add this as well. You can also inset a little bit. All right, then you can maybe, for example, scale. So already, interesting result. 
it looks like I undid the mirror. So let me get that back. So using this, you can kind of just accidentally get these interesting results here and just really learn how you can push your design just by doing simple moving and scaling. So if I rotate this, for example, you start to see how the forms, you can blend one form into another. And even though this may not look very good, you can start to see the foundations of how you can have more freeform design. Look at how, look at how interesting this shape looks as it transitions from this kind of sharp point or smooth point to this kind of curve right here. You see this nice transition and you want to start kind of learning and thinking in these types of terms is not just rigid booleans, but how can you maximize just very simple operations? So for example, I can extrude, right click, I can rotate like so, maybe scale a little bit. And so now I've kind of got this happening. And you can see how we're getting these interesting results using very basic operations here. Maybe kind of move this a little bit and just kind of modulate it. And now we've got this. What if I scale it on the Z axis? You know, now we have this happening here. So just really kind of experiment with this, maybe rotate it in this direction. And now we have this kind of shape happening. So really just use your basic tools to their maximum and kind of just see how far you can take this. All right. So don't forget about our basic move tools as well. So I can move this out here. Inset, extrude. Let's select this edge and move it to get maybe something like this. And so you can also do things like this. You can just, for example, select this. And what you can do is maybe just, I'm gonna shrink my selection maybe like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it and I'm going to inset it. And now we have this happening. What I can also do is instead of moving this, I can just, let's say, move just these here. And now I will inset. And so now I've just got this transition from smoothness to sharpness right here. After doing this, you can select these, just kind of move them forward. So whenever you extrude, it's a good idea to make things more interesting by just kind of moving them afterwards. You can see if I had a basic extrusion here, it would look kind of boring. But since I scale it a little bit and move these parts for a little bit, we now have a much more interesting extrusion. So just to kind of re-show you, I can select, let's say this. So if I just extrude like this, you can see very boring extrusion, not very visually interesting. But if I scale it, already more interesting, but it's still very uniform. In other words, all these sides are very even. So if I just move it back, now you can see how it's much thinner here and a little bit thicker here, more interesting, more visually distinct, more contrast happening here. If I scale it like this even more and move it back here even more, even more interesting. So you can kind of get more out of your extrudes by doing things like this. And so now that we extrude here, we can go and extrude something right here. You can also just use our previous tool, loop cut. You know, get this. And then we can, for example, select this and inset right here and then extrude and then scale. So you can see how now we're putting a new extrude right here without having to rely on Booleans. You can see we're doing this without Booleans, which means our forms will flow into each other better. And don't forget about our basic move tool. So I can then select this, just kind of maybe move a little bit. So you can see we're getting these very interesting shapes here just by doing very basic things. 
So it may look kind of awkward. So it's up to you to practice this to turn your initial awkwardness into a better mastery of your tools here. So if you've never done this before, it may kind of be strange and awkward at first. You just have to kind of practice and then you'll get a better understanding of how to achieve better results with this. So you can see how I get this kind of transition without relying on booleans. Then for example, I can extrude this positively now and scale it even more and inset. And we can even move the inset up here as well. And we're getting all sorts of interesting shapes just like this. When you have this happening here, you can just select these edges. So I'm going to select all these edges here and I'm just going to move them to the right. You can see how that has been more or less fixed here. And you can also just insert some loops just to sharpen things up. We're not going to rely on crease sets yet. We're going to rely on support loops to fix things up at this point. And don't forget, after inserting right here, you have a new loop to work with. So then you can select this, holding down Alt. And now I can, for example, extrude this. And now I have this happening here. Before extruding this, you can also hold Shift to add these as well. So we can inset. I'm going to have to do a small inset because if we have a large inset, it's going to start to clip on itself right here. But after the inset, we can rotate around. And so you can see how we're just starting to get interesting shapes happening here. So just try using these basic tools in ways you never used them before and you'll find yourself with some interesting results. Thank you for watching and take care.